Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. Every time you tune in, you know we are going to debate. This is the Great Debaters Contest, Nakuru Edition, Austin Yumbok. And Mariam Bishar, Bahati Girls Goes versus Anesta Victory Boys, and they are debating on whether the adoption of genetically modified organisms will enhance food security in Africa. Let's hope the debate is a riveting one. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. Human beings are curious beings, and this is how GMOs came about. I am Roy Kimani, and it is a privilege to stand before you proposing the motion Adoption of genetically modified organisms will enhance food security in Africa. I shall expound on the motion. What is adoption? Adoption is the decision to use something such as an idea, which in this case are genetically modified organisms, which are organisms that have had their genetic structure altered artificially so that they will produce more fruit or not be affected by disease, thus enhancing. What is enhancing? to increase further or improve the good quality, value or status, bringing about food security. What is food security? It is the act of making food available to every personnel without depleting the resources. In this Mbizo, I have several points to make. Firstly, the adoption of GMOs will make it possible for sufficient supply of food in the market. Since the GMOs have a shorter maturity period, they can be grown recurrently and therefore ensuring the availability of food in plenty. At times, we face food shortage, and at times, food is too expensive. Secondly, GMOs will bring about the creation of employment. Through the construction of research institutes to facilitate analyzing of GMOs, a skilled labor force will be required to operate the machinery and carry out these tests. Thirdly, through the adoption of GMOs, it will give us a chance to major on the other multiple problems facing Africa. When we adopt GMOs, we shall eliminate food shortage, a major cause of death in Africa, and have the opportunity to rule out other problems in Africa, such as insecurity, as is the case in Somalia, Sudan, Rwanda, Kenya, and also low industrialization, as is the case in Zimbabwe, DRC Congo, not forgetting desertification, as is the case in Namibia, where we have the Namib Desert, in Botswana, where we have the Kalahari Desert, in Northern Africa countries, where we have the Sahara Desert, which brings me to my next point. Introduction of GMOs will control erosion and desertification in Africa. By this I mean, since GMOs are modified to withstand various climates, they could be planted as vegetation cover, under the proper irrigation and prevent soil erosion come desertification. Statistical data shows that vast Sahara Desert lengthens at a rate of 48 kilometers annually and is now crawling into Somalia. And we as Kenya, the country respectively next to Somalia, need to act fast. Uh, on, on, on my fifth point, boost member states' economy. As we scholars learn in business studies, a reduction in the price of a commodity leads to an increase in demand of the concerned good. I think that is self-explanatory. Thank you. First proposal, you have three minutes to make your opening statements. I am Caroline Lankenwa from Bahati Girls Secondary School, and I'm here to strongly oppose the motion that states, adoption of GMO will enhance food security in Africa. GMO is genetically modified organisms. Adoption is the decision to accept a policy put across wholly. Genetically modified organisms, which was an act released from the 1994, also called biotechnology or gene technology, is the, are the, the organisms whose DNA has been altered by artificial insertion of genes. Food security. Food security is the availability of safe, sufficient, 
affordable and nutritious food, and in this case, to our continent, Africa. First, expertise. Ownership and control is concentrated in too few hands of the learned, as we term them today. This includes not involving the small-scale farmers in decision-making to launch the genetically modified organisms, as arrogated by Helen Degua of the SADC, a community development in Kenya. Outcrossing is my second point. Outcrossing is the transfer of genes from genetically modified crops to co conventional crops. This brings about confusions in the national authority of labeling the difference between genetically modified organisms and genetically modified organisms. Traces in foods for animal use and industrial use are detected in low levels for human in food for human consumption. This really brings about confusion. When you talk about genetically modified organisms, we, we, we are ready to accept this technology by being, we, we want to, to accept this technology in that we want to assure that this food is safe for human consumption. So if there is confusion in the labeling of these foods, we will bring, we will, as a citizens of Africa, we will not be able to, withstand, to readily accept this new technology. Genetically modified organisms are not are the worst option for food security. Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals now. Proposers, you have three minutes. I feel very honored, ladies and gentlemen, to stand in front of you to propose the motion that says adoption of genetically modified organisms will enhance food security in Africa. My name is Parocious Aitun from Anesta Victory Boys. I would first of all like to go contrary to my colleague who tried to state that the adoption of genetically modified organisms is the worst option for African food security. Or just trying to say they are not safe. Let me tell you, when the genetically, genetically modified organisms were first introduced in the West, Western countries, particularly the United States of America, we are sure that they went through a series of research under the hands of well-educated people who clearly knows the impact of chemical on human life. We surely know, according to biologists, that the human body is proteinous in nature which is made of compounds such as sulfur, carbon, and oxygen. Therefore, introduction and usage of the right quantity and quality at the right time will surely have little or no effect to the human life. Getting to my point, firstly, this genetically modified organism enhances industrialization and mechanization. This GMO require industry for self-manufacture in our country. This is because we cannot rely on importing goods day in, day out. Therefore, these industries require heavy machinery to be able to produce the goods, thus giving the youth an innovation point on how to make the machinery which will best suit the genetically modified industry. Secondly, GMO reduces unlikely disputes such as death. Let's say if these genetically modified organisms were introduced to the northwestern part of Kenya, whereby we hear incidences such as cattle rustling, for example in Capedo, people are dying day in day out due to what cattle rustling. What if these people had genetically modified organisms which they are surplus in production? They have no reason to go in and catarastal, hence killing innocent people. Fourth, this genetically modified organism makes use of idle land. Due to the ability of the GMO to survive in the harshest condition, the lands which were rather useless turned to be very productive. That is, a land which had few or no plant cover turns to be productive and support life, hence yield maximum profit. Thank you. Bahati girls, you have the floor, three minutes. Yes, yes. As I say the third yes, 
Someone from that corner will shout the sensation of strength and join me. But someone from that corner will tell me what's up with those yeses of yours. In this world today, we are brought up in a world whereby some disapprove and some approve. But the question bounces back to you as an individual. Which side are you on? I beg to differ from my opponents when they say that the genetically modified organisms will help in the industrialization sector. Who told them that these conventional foods that you have today can't help us in the industrialization sector? Have they heard of the Del Monte factory in Dika? Do they purely use do they purely use the genetically modified organisms? Also, have they heard about the Horticultural Crops Development Authority? It's an organization in Kenya. Yes, and they thrive well. They don't depend on these GMO foods or the GMO crops. Research, safety. Our opponents are telling us that research has been done in order to ensure that these genetically modified crops and foods are safe for human consumption. I want to pose a question to them. Do you know of an organization called the Codex Alimentarius? It's a research institute under the United Nations organizations. They have proved that there's an element called the glyphosate. This glyphosate is induced into these genetically modified crops to make them resistant to insects. But when they are consumed by the humans, they induce strange toxins into the body. I'm sure all of you know the functions of the liver, the function of detoxification, these toxins which are added into the body overwork the liver. This causes liver failure. How many times are we going to talk about diseases? Death, death, all over. Should we make it so vivid? Yes, death is nature, but you don't have to insist on it. Let's not have the aim of bringing food into our continent and yet we are killing our people. Who will feed on those, on those food? Who will do that? People are dying and yet you're bringing in food made from the, which are made from gen genetics and they're modified using the genetical method. Please people, let's not be blinded by bringing in new inventions and killing our people. And who said cattle rustling is caused by shortage of food? How can a hungry person go after cattle? Does she have, a, have the strength? Does he have the strength? Seriously, people, you can't even survive for one day without food. Then talk, telling us that cultural rustling is caused by shortage of food is not realistic. And therefore, I stand strongly and convince you people, the food that you eat every day, the conventional foods that you feed on each and every day, let's rely on them, let's depend on them, and not bring in new things which come with new problems. Thank you. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. The proposers have been asked on what the health effects of excessive consumption of GMO our foods are and uh, the opposition have been challenged if we do not adopt GMO technology what other methods can can we use to deal with the problems of food insecurity we'll have them respond proposal number three you have three minutes life life is cruel every day people die but in Africa the major cause of death is starvation and that is why GMOs came as our savior in front of you, I'm Keith Baranga from Manesta Victory Boys, ready to propose the motion. Adoption of genetically modified organisms will enhance food security in Africa. Now, a question was posed to us. My answer to that question is, what I, what I tell you, quality and quantity. If you don't know how GMOs are made, let me tell you now. One seed, example, a maize seed, that is a seed that is genetically modified. 
From that seed, other seeds sprout. Now, through this whole process of sprouting, the chemical contents of the original seed are reduced. The seeds that are sprouted are the ones which you come to eat. That's the answer to your question. Now, to my fellow colleague on this other side, talking about the GMOs causing diseases, now let me tell you, there are long-term effects. There's a reason you have a liver in your body. That liver is to remove the toxic substances that you eat. And it's not that you'll survive on GMOs forever. Food security, the food security you require, you're given the GMOs for a specific time until you're capable of growing your own conventional crops. Now, to my own points. First, as the word states, genetically modified organisms, these are structures modified, seeds or plants, which are modified to be better. Now, secondly, farmers are able to reap more in less time. What do I mean? Um, as my fellow colleague had said, they mature faster in a shorter period of time. Take for, for example, an apple tree, a mango tree. Five years is the maximum maturity period for a conventional crop. Through genetically modifying it, you get the period reduced to as low as two years, bringing me to my third point. Now, surplus food, surplus food will be exported to countries which also suffer the same problem of food insecurity. They improve quality of ordinary food, improving the nutritional content. That is why I was referring to quality and quantity. GMOs are made to increase the quantity produced in a given harvest season. For a conventional plant, through genetically modifying it, you'll get double the amount you'll get from conventional crops. Now, also, they can be adapted to any climate, hence universal. For instance, coffee, when coffee will be genetically modified, you can get it grown in any, er any area under any climate, since they work well, but coffee is not a cause for food insecurity. We are mainly basing on maize and beans. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. You really, really do amaze me, Oppos proposition. How can you just stand on this podium, on this stage, on this auspicious day, and lie to all these heads? How? How? Mr. Baraka, when you were starting, you said, GMOs do not cause diseases. Wah. I, I have no words because genetically modified foods cause diseases. For example, kidney failure. My counterpart here told you about glyphosate, which interferes with the detoxification system. On to the question. Um, the question was posed to me that, what else could be an alternative to GMOs? Take a scenario of an example in Egypt. Egypt is a very dry desert country but they produce very delicious crops. You may ask yourself, how? River Nile, that is the answer. Jeep irrigation, pipes are passed all the way from River Nile to all the crops which are being planted in the country. Don't you think that the crops thrive? Actually, they export to us. They export to the rest of the African countries. Very, very delicious foods. On to my first point. People making money out of hunger. Genetically modified foods, for example, can or may feed the greed of the companies and not the need of the hungry people. Take a scenario, a hungry mother. She uses about half of her income to purchase food. And these profit-seeking, money-hungry companies have the audacity to take her money from her and produce, pro produce half-baked products to her. Is that fair? That is not fairness at all. Once again, I would like to put it out to you that people are hungry, not because they cannot produce but because the food production basic is being systematically destroyed by interventions of profit-seeking companies. People strive hard to get their food, but these profit-seeking companies are in it to destroy their products. 
Farida Akhta from the Policy Research for Development Alternatives in Bangladesh quotes that the profit-seeking companies are, and I quote, making business out of hunger, end quote. I would like to conclude by telling you that for how long are we going to endure this pain, this exploitation, this suffering? and disease because of this so-called new gene technology, we would rather stay happily with our conventional mode of living. Thank you. We'll hear closing submissions. Anesta Victory, you have a minute. My colleague talked about long-term effects. Who said no diseases? I don't know. I mean long-term, and I repeat, long-term effects. Nobody ate a cob of maize today and woke up tomorrow with kidney failure. I'd like to further expound on my point which was boosting country's economy. Since GMOs are cheap, people will opt to buy them since they are cheap. And this will result in an increment in the economy, favoring both the country and the farmers who depend on agriculture to earn a living. Okay, having said this, I'd urge all of you to join me in proposing the motion Adoption of genetically modified organisms will enhance food security in Africa. And insisting on the, say, on the saying, be the change you want to see. Uh, GMOs are slowly climbing up the agricultural ladder since they have more merits than demerits. Thank you. Bahati girls, you have a minute as well. Genetically modified organisms. Let's measure our thinking on the word organisms. This includes microorganisms, humans, and crops. We may clone humans at, as it is done in the developed countries. Yes, they will help in provision of labor, and this will help us have high produce. But you can imagine, how many clones will we invent? How many humans are we going to make through genetics? They, may, they might overcome us. They might take control, and perhaps you're creating a monster. I can't imagine myself being in the church, and the pastor says, and I say, I, Orori Domitila Kemunto, take you, test tube Wanyoni. Do you even have parents? Do you even have a name? I am an African. Let's stop this drama. Let's stop creating these organisms, for they are there to destroy us. Long-term effects in terms of diseases. Who sees danger and walks towards it? In the end, you'll still have liver failure. Thank you. Roy of Anesta Victory Boys, you're the first speaker, and I commend you a lot. Your first statement was human beings are curious beings, and it is curiosity that led to GMO. Uh, and I think that was a smart way of addressing the issue. iTunes, um, you also introduced the issue of industrialization. Yes, but it was not completely analyzed. What I can say about you is the aspect of articulation is what was lacking. And finally, to Kate, statements, you know, when you make a serious statement like Africa's major cause of death is starvation, according to who? Guys, remember that we are not really an authority in ourselves. We must cite the source uh, of wh whatever we have gotten our information from. Also, the way you answered questions, it was fairly well. So if you look at the team, you find Roy was very strong, and the energy almost disappeared towards the end. So as a team, the aspect of teamwork. But I want to hail Roy's wisdom. That was beautiful. Bahati girls, Caroline. There was a good flow, but you can tell that totally distracted our flow in terms of what exactly you're building uh, as your point. Kimunto, you came out very strong, you know, you were not um, affected by that. And so in terms of cross-examination, you did excellently well. Um, but you used some examples like Del Monte. In fact, I wanted you to educate me now and ask you, what do they do? Maybe they have already put it down in their website or something. Olive, um, you're very strong as well and confident. You're a good speaker, you know, you're not intimidated. Um, however, I, I wanted to check on a few straight statements that you make. For example, when you talk about delicious, you actually say delicious crops, you know, from Egypt. I think you meant food. Um, how does that come in as an alternative for GMOs? 
you know, that was the question that was asked, that what is the alternative? So I think in answering of questions, you evaded that, okay? It was kind of an evasive way of answering the question. But however, I think as a team, you did fairly well. All the best. Well, the judges have decided. Anesta Victory Boys and Bahati Girls seem to be evenly matched. We have our first tie in Nakuru region at 68%. Please give both teams a round of applause. Congratulations to the two teams on stage. We thank your audience for paying attention and we urge you to follow us on our social media at Great Debaters EA and also you, the viewer back home. Follow us on social media. I'm Austin Nyumbok. And I am Mariam Bishar. Thank you for watching. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.